Good morning, God's people. Good morning, New Beginning, and uh, the people of God all around uh, the world that uh, that has availed themselves to the message of God's words from uh, New Beginning Baptist Fellowship Church. We are glad to be with you again this morning. Uh, God's words this morning is found in the book of Mark, uh, Mark chapter 9. I'll invite you to turn your Bible to the book of Mark in chapter 9. Uh, we will read the whole chapter of Mark 9. And he said to them, I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than any in the world than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son, whom I loved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they have seen until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. They kept the matter to themselves, discussing what rising from the uh, what rising from the dead meant. And they asked him, "Why do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied. To be sure, Elijah does come first and restores all things. Why then is it written that the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected? But I tell you, Elijah has come and they have done to him everything they wished, just as it is written about him. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and run to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a, by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. 
Whenever it sees him, it throws him to the ground. It forms at the mouth, yashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I ask your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him to the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, say Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that, a crowd was warning to the scene. He rebuked the evil spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus has gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. They left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand why he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Teacher, said John, 
we saw a man driving out demons in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. No one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. I tell you the truth, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to Christ will certainly not lose his reward. And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a large male stone tied around his neck. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life main than with the hands to go into hell where the fire never goes out and if your food causes you to sin cut it off it is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell and if your eyes causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other. The word of the Lord. Let us turn our attention together to prayer and our worship. Let us go to the Lord uh, in prayer and continue to pray for COVID-19 that is still uh, in our world. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a second uh, wave of COVID-19 that is really uh, all over the world again and still very extremely destructive. Please, the people that are suffering from COVID-19 are human beings just like you and I. They have families just like you and I. Let us remember to bring them before the Lord in prayer each and every day especially now in the worship, that we should remember those who are suffering from COVID-19. Let us pray also and as well for those in our means that are un unemployed, those who are struggling to find answers to how they will be able to look after their family and pay the bills. Let us remember them in our prayers. Let us be each other's keeper as we lift them up in prayer so that we may stand by them. Let us also pray for those who have lost their loved ones and that are still grieving. Let us remember to ask the Lord who is the great comforter to comfort them in their sorrow and their sorrow. Uh, sorrow and end in their loss. Please join me as we go before the Lord in prayer and remember those 
you may have your own lease of family members, friends or neighbors that are stunned and in need of prayer. Remember to as well bring them before God in prayer. Let us go in prayer believing in our hearts that our God hears our prayers and he also not deaf to them and that in his own time, in his own way, he does answer to all of our prayers. So let us approach the throne of grace with confidence knowing that our Lord is in our presence this morning and he is listening to our cause. Let us pray. Lord, Call us to caring service after the fashion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are hearts we can heal, hurts we can soothe, sins committed against us that we can forgive, souls seeking truth that we can enlighten, and lives lost that we can save. Open doors for us to enter that in, our, in, in, in at least some of these areas we may share in a Christ-like spirit what is needed to sustain all and lift the struggles of the road, the road of life. So we come before you this morning, O oh Lord. We pray for the sick around us. We pray for COVID-19. We pray for those who, are, who have been afflicted by it. And we pray, O oh, Heavenly Father, that they will find healing from you and strength. We pray for those who are unemployed, that are looking for work. We pray for those who are struggling with the thoughts how they are going to be able to take care of their family. We commit them to you, O oh Lord. We pray for your mercy. We pray that your grace will be enough for each and every one of them. Lord, let your Holy Spirit come upon us with strength and with power in this worship hour. Let this be a powerful hour as we abide in your presence. O oh Lord, we pray that your blessing, your blessings will, will come upon us as we listen together to your word. Help us to now forget about our, ourselves and concentrate in, on you and and listen to you as you speak to us to the written words in your holy book. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you turn to the book of uh, to the book of Mark in Mark chapter nine, where God's word is going to be taken. Uh, has been taken and is going to be expounded on to us uh, this morning. In Mark chapter 9, we will uh, derive from the chapter a, a title for the message this morning, One Possessing Power. My text 
is indeed found in Mark chapter one, eh, Mark chapter nine, and verse one. And he said to them, I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. The servant Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, had a responsibility to reveal the kingdom of God had come in power. With this in mind, this chapter reveals that he had inner power. That the Lord Jesus Christ uh, have intellectual power. That the Lord Jesus Christ has consoling power. The Lord Jesus Christ has within himself resurrection power. The Lord Jesus has social power and a power in his very name. For all power has been given to him, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I want us to take a few minutes together and dig into Mark chapter 9. And we will discover those powers that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, has been given by his heavenly Father. First, let us talk about the inner power that the Lord Jesus Christ has. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 2 to verse 10, describe to us the inner power that is within the Lord Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 9, we read that the Lord Jesus Christ has transforming power. A strange incident occurred in Jesus' life. His body was transformed, transformed into a wonderful radiance that manifested mystified really in the manifestation to those who were about him at that time. In reality, his inner glow of godliness burst forth to be seen by the immediate witnesses that were around the Lord Jesus Christ at that moment. The Lord Jesus Christ show us in verse 2 to verse 10 that he has also backward projection power. Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets stood with Jesus. These two talk with with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the servant Messiah. In all probability, the conversation centered around the fact that Christ was the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. The Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated to us here that he had forward projection power. As Jesus and the disciples descended from the mountain of glory, Jesus commanded them that this incident 
should remain secret until the time of his glory in the resurrection. That is in Mark chapter 9 and verse 9. Secondly, the Lord Jesus Christ is presented to us here as having intellectual power. Look at verse 11 of Mark chapter 9, verse 11 to verse 13. In Mark chapter 9, in verse, uh, in verse 11 to verse 13, we, we see uh, three things here. That perplexing question. The scribes pondered much over the question of Elijah's return. This teaching is found in Malachi chapter 4, in verse 5 and 6. The, per the perplexing question about Elijah. Then Jesus, with his intellectual power, gave an explanation. The explanation Jesus gave maintained the truth of the scriptural question found its explanation in the story of the Son of Man. Elijah would prepare the way for the Son of Man. Then we see also that there was an application here, intellectually, that the Lord proceeded to apply this prophecy of Elijah to John the Baptist. Jesus, as always, possessed within himself intellectual power. He is the truth. He knows all things. He knows the things past, the thing present, and he also knows the things of the future. Thirdly, we find in Mark chapter 9, verse 14 to 29, that Jesus has also within himself consoling power. We see that here in agony, uh, agony involve the agony of a father. A father was suffering over the illness of his son. He had sought the help of the Jesus Christ disciples. To no avail. When he took his son to the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ with his illness, they tried, but they did it wrongly, and they were not able to chase the spirit, the bad spirit, the evil spirit that have tormented and possesses the, the father's son. So therefore, the disciples fail. So we see the failure of the disciples. The disciples' failure multiplied the father's frustration. They tried to accomplish a job they did not believe they could do. This was their sin. It is not only the sin of the past, but it is also the sin of the present. And it will remain the sin of the future. That those who go to church, and that those who worship, that those who claim to read the Bible, that those who claim to pray, who come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, have remained in their unbelief. 
They do not believe really that God can do the very thing that they pray about. So the disciples have approached the boy possessed with evil spirit, with doubts in their mind. Could it really be done? So therefore, they have brought about to themselves their own failures. The situation was settled. Jesus performed two major operations of consolation here. He cast the evil spirit out of the sun and he shared with his disciples the way of spiritual power. My brothers and my sisters, Pay attention to what the Lord Jesus Christ has said to the disciples. That this kind of spirit, this kind of uh, demon possessions, this kind of evil controlled life can only be taken care of through prayers. It is very consoling for every one of us as we listen to the word of the Lord this morning that we can be consoled as well that the prayer of the righteous person, the fervent prayer of the righteous person avail much and that there are situations in my life and in your life. There are situations in our world, the only way they can be taken care of is through prayers. And the question must be remain for all God's people this morning. Are you a prayerful man? Are you a prayerful woman? Young people, do you pray? Children, have you been taught are you practicing the life of prayer? There are certain situations and crises in our life that can only be taken care of through prayers. The teachers won't be able to get rid of it. The authorities, the government cannot take care of it. Only through prayers. Also, there are times you and I must forget about ourselves in our self-confidence approach that we have all the time to solve our own problems, to go down on our knees to the Lord in prayer because these kind of problems can only be taken care of through prayers. So the Lord proceeds to apply this to the disciples. He consoled the physically and the spiritually downcast. Are you down? Are you feeling a sense of depression? Are you feeling alone? Do you feel that you are in this battle all alone and no one else is fighting with you. No one is standing with you. Be consoled with the word of our Lord Jesus Christ as well this morning. That the situation can settle. And it can only settle physically or spiritually through prayers. Fourthly, Jesus also has within himself uh, resurrection power. Look at verse 30 to 32 of Mark chapter 9. Jesus was able to prophesy or predicted his own death Jesus prophecy of his death. Jesus attempted 
to prepare his followers for his impending death. He left it necessary to reveal, he felt it really necessary to reveal to them the stark reality of the horrible days that were coming and that was ahead for him. That the Son of Man will be betrayed and be killed. The Lord Jesus Christ misunderstanding disciples. They were, they were so overwhelmed with Jesus' presence that they could not conceive of the Lord Jesus Christ being dead. They could not understand that his death would be temporary. This teaching made them afraid. They did not know what to do with themselves. They did not know how to digest that news. The Lord Jesus Christ also confronted them with the resurrection that would happen just to really help them in their despondency. The Lord Jesus Christ talked to them about the resurrection as he foretold it. Along with the fact of his death, Jesus shared with the disciples that the fact of his resurrection, the idea of his resurrection did not seem to register with them. Also, there are those in our means that are struggling with life after death. There are those who are still questioning within themselves, would it be over when I am put in the grave? Would it be over when I put my loved ones in the grave? Oh, my friend, let us be reminded this day that because he lives, we also shall live. Because he lives, we will face tomorrow. There is a tomorrow after death. There is a tomorrow that is beyond the grave because of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he had to foretell that to the disciples. And let us also be reminded that it is the anchor of our faith that God in his mighty power has raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead and that those who die in Christ when the trumpet of God will sound all the dead in Christ Jesus shall rise to meet him in the air. The Lord Jesus Christ fifthly Talk about his social power. Look at verse 33 to verse 37 of Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9, verse 33 to 37, the Lord Jesus Christ here talk about three things. One is that he talk about the disagreements, the despicable sin of vain glory worked its way into the fellowship of his disciples. They were arguing among themselves as to who should be the greatest. In a world full of COVID, in a world full of sin, in a world full of hunger, in a world full of sickness, killing so many people, God's people are still engaging into how, who has the mega church, who is the best pastor, 
who has more people listening to their preaching? Who is number one? Who is number two? God's people are engaging themselves in frivolous arguments just like the disciples were. They were arguing among themselves, the Lord tell us, as to who should be the greatest. Who oh, hear the answer of our Lord. Hear the answer of our Lord. The disposition of service Jesus has brought to them. That you, my brothers and my sisters, we can learn from them. That Jesus shared with the disciples the true attitude of a servant. If a man desired, Jesus said, to be first, he should be last, servant of all. Oh, there are those who argue in their own homes as to who is the greatest. Is it the man or the woman? Is it the children and the family that are the greatest? And the Lord Jesus Christ did not attribute that to any gender base. The Lord Jesus Christ attributed it to an attitude, an attitude of servanthood. We all should serve one another in the family. We all should serve one another in the church. We all should serve one another in the community. And we should be the servant of the Lord to the rest of the world. No place in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. No place in the families that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ for a fight into, uh, as to who is the greatest, who is the number one. So, so, so the Lord Jesus Christ has power over the social setting of our lives. Those who put others down because they do not have as much education as they do. Those who put others down because of the color of skin. Those who put others down because they are not the same gender, the same race as they are. Or because they have a little bit of the world goods or the world the world's possession. The Lord Jesus is calling you and he's calling me to take a servant attitude. The servant, he said, would be first, would be the greatest, and he's the greatest in his kingdom. Living illustration is giving here from verse 33 to verse 37. There is a living illustration here. Jesus clenched his discussion by setting this social and spiritual problem with a common illustration. He placed a small child among the disciples and he said, Whoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receive me. We sometimes grow up in cultures that has taught us that children is to be seen and not to be heard. The Lord Jesus Christ is setting a child before you and before me this Sunday in this worship time. To say that a child has a voice. A young person has a voice. A middle-aged person has a voice. The senior citizens of our world, they also have voices. The single women of our world, they have a voice. The white and the black women of our world, they have a voice. Everyone that is made in the image of God, they also have a they also have a voice. And the Lord Jesus Christ presents to the disciples a child. If you receive 
a child in my name. You have received me, Jesus said. Oh, we know, we know there are hundreds of children all over the world, whether they are in Christian school or secular school, there are thousands of children all over the world crying of hunger. They are crying not only with physical hunger, but they are crying with spiritual hunger. They are calling us. Please bring Jesus to us. The Lord Jesus Christ said, do not hinder them. If you accept the children of this world, you accept me. This is a sign of humility and an attitude that the Lord Jesus Christ would like to see in all of us. What is your view of the children all around you? Oh, may it be the same as of the Lord Jesus Christ's view of the little children that is all around us. When last during this COVID time you have called one of the children of this church, of your family, to ask them how are they coping with all these changes all around them. The Lord Jesus Christ give us this living illustration Whoever shall receive one of such little children in my name, they have received me. Sixthly and lastly, the Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated to us in Mark chapter 9, verse 38 to 49, his power that he, that he has in his name. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus rebuked the disciples for, the, for their tendency to exclude others from the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. He maintained that no man which shall do a miracle in my name can lightly speak speak evil of me. He was aware that his name contained a miraculous power. This is still truth even today that in the name of Jesus Christ you can get up from that bed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you can get out of that bed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can pray over your husband. You can pray over your wife. You can pray over your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can pray on the spirit of COVID and chase the spirit of COVID out of your home, out of your family, and out of your neighborhood. That name has power. In his name, we can cast out demons. In his name, we can bring life to the dead, the dead spiritually. So the Lord Jesus Christ had to teach the disciples that there is miracles in his name. Oh, that you and I will know that. Oh, that you and I will get up to realize in the realization that I have power within me because I have that name that is above all other names with me. Oh, that everywhere we go, we can take the name of Jesus with us. The Lord Jesus Christ also teach them here in Mark chapter 9, 38 to 49, that service in his name, the servant Messiah, encourage his followers to perform the role of servant in, re in relation to others. He maintained that those who serve in his name 
would, would be rewarded. We must, as Christians, sometimes show our attitude and our closeness to the Lord Jesus Christ, our willingness to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, to take a pail of water in a towel in the other hands and go to our neighbors and go to our families and go to our friends and wash their feet in the name of the Lord. I am talking about the symbolic washing of people's feet, meeting their need. Oh, some people nowadays may not have a dirty feet that we need to wash, but they may be hungry. Some people may need a house painting. Some people may need the, the, the help with the decoration of the house. Some may need help with their children as they try to parent them and become teachers and do everything at home now because of COVID. The Lord Jesus Christ needs his servants to be at his service. What are you doing to serve the Lord even in the hard time of COVID-19? We can go in the name of the Lord with a glass of cold water, with a slice of bread. We can go in the name of the Lord to still try to meet the needs of those who are hungry all around us. The Lord Jesus Christ not only commanded service, but the Lord Jesus Christ searching in his name. Jesus then said to his disciples, should have a period of heart searching. We can search the Holy Scriptures. We can search our hearts. We can search the motives of others in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 9, in verse 42 and verse 43. In the final verse of this chapter, the Lord issued a challenge to his fellow servants to have peace one with another. This world is in turmoil. Our families are in turmoil. The neighborhood is in turmoil. The Lord Jesus Christ is closing this great chapter of power. And he's saying to you and to me as we go and live our lives this week and for the rest of the day, have peace, he said, with one another. Oh, before you even leave the worship time with me this morning, Shall we give a sign of peace to one another? Turn to the person right beside you. Give them a hug and a kiss and say, Peace be upon you. Turn to the other person and go around the room and give a sign of peace. Shake the hands and give a hug. Perhaps maybe as we leave the message, Get on the phone and call somebody and tell them peace be upon them. And, uh, and trying to give the sign of peace that the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to provoke from you and then from me. This could come to pass only if the salt Jesus did retain its seasoning. Jesus does not want you to forget that you are the salt of the earth. And if you lose your saltiness, he said, we really having problem in the world. You are the salt in your family. You are the salt in your neighborhood. You are the salt in your workplace. You are the seasoning that give taste to the life that is all around you. And the Lord Jesus Christ, that he said that that is, if a Christian retain their power, if a Christian retain their power, that you are light in the darkness. 
and you are sold to a perishing world. That the Lord Jesus Christ said, you will have power. And your power that is within you and the Lord Jesus Christ can change things that are all around you. Oh, may the Lord send us our way this morning from the worship. Knowing that we have power within us. Because we are in Christ. And that power can change things. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ has had power. He has changed my life. He has changed yours. That we can change the life of others in the situations that are all around us. Oh, the grace of God of eternity will grace our ways as we walk into this week. May we commit now our lives to faithful obedience in the opportunities that come our way. And all for the cause of the kingdom. Amen.